and the first speaker, uh, Irakli Pachkoria, who is going to talk about uh, classification of modular spectra and Frankes uh, algebraic algebraicity conjecture. All right, thank you very Please. much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me know if you can't read my handwriting or maybe something will be slow with my technology. Maybe we can try to fix it. Uh, this is all joint work with um, Piotr Strongowski. Um, and uh, I'm not sure he could make it this morning because he's in America and it's probably some crazy time for him. Um, so uh, I will start very slow because it's early morning. You know, people just woke up. At least I just woke up and... Uh, and uh, you know, uh, don't want to go too crazy. So, so I mean, just like to give you a bit of introduction. Maybe some people in the audience are also not uh, super comfortable with stable homotopy theory. So, what we want to understand uh, this whole stable homotopy theory stuff is we want to understand uh, stable homotopy groups of spheres. And uh, what are these? I mean, these are just a limit of unstable homotopy groups when n goes into infinity for higher and higher with higher and higher suspensions. And, and so pi L of X is of course the held homotopy of the SpaceX. Okay, and just to show you how complicated these are, uh, maybe just draw the first couple of homotopy groups here, you know, uh, to make sure that we understand a bit what's going on. Let's see if I remember, I, I wrote down some of them, you know, uh, from my, I remember them until maybe maybe eight from my student times and then I don't remember any of them. So this is uh, up to eight. So here it's Z, here it's Z mod two, that's the Hopf map. Here it's Z mod two, which is Hopf maps squared. Here it's uh, Z mod 24, that's the second half map, or third actually, uh, the quaternionic uh, half map. And then there's this, this funny thing happening that fourth and fifth homotopy groups of spheres are, are uh, trivial. Uh, and these kind of triviality in homotopy groups will become later important for us. Uh, this is Z mod two. Uh, this is the square of the quaternion half map. Uh, and this is here Z mod 240, that's the Octanion hop map, and this is Z mod two squared, and here already funny things start happening. I mean, this is some total bracket kind of thing. And then I think the next one is Z mod two to the three, and then I then I forget, you know, then I forget. Anyways, so this is pretty irregular, as you see, and quite complicated. And what is even more complicated is the graded ring of homotopy groups. So you can consider the direct sum all of these, where k is greater or equal than zero, pi k s, and this is a graded ring. And it's a very complicated graded ring in the sense that like, for example, the positive part, this is, this is nilpotent elements here. This is all nilpotent. That's a theorem by Nishida. Uh, and, and also what makes in a way things complicated before rationalizing is that these pi KSs, these are all finite. Uh, for k bigger than zero. So as you see, there's lots of torsion and lots of nilpotence in it. So to hope uh, to understand anything about this ring is, is pretty difficult. So, so we need to come up with some tools uh, to, 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 to study it. And also like doing some kind of algebra with this ring is also pretty, pretty complicated. Okay, but, but what is the consequence of this is of course, I mean, this is, I should mention here, of course, Sarah, uh, uh, the, the result of Sayer also implies that if you take rational homotopy groups, if you just take uh, the rational homotopy groups stably, then, uh, then this is just Q when star is zero and, and zero else. So there is a huge uh, difference if you work rationally or if you work integrally, but what's going on in the middle is of course, uh, is of course a question and, and, and that's something maybe we can address a bit today. Okay. So now uh, these are not really computed and people have made some good progress in computing these things in, in various ranges, but of course, like totally computing this thing is unreachable goal at this point. I think like the recent progress by Isaacson, Wong and Jolie 
uh, who uh, this uh, this uh, show that like I mean we can go pretty far up, but uh, you know uh, it's still uh, still like I don't know they computed it until ninety or something like that, at least to locally. Uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, I mean, in general, these computations are pretty difficult. Okay, so to study these homotopy groups, uh, we can use uh, cohomology theories. We can use cohomology theories and, and what are cohomology theories? I mean, this is all some language generalized cohomology theories. So, this as I say, we have some functors from pointy topological spaces up into a billion groups for every integer n. And I mean, these satisfy some axioms. Uh, and I don't want to list these axioms. I mean, everybody has their favorite set, but like long exact sequence might be a Torres homotopy axiom and, 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 and whatever, whatever the other set of axioms you like and uh, you want to have. So, uh, and, and so examples, of course, examples, of course, that we care about in this talk are, say, singular cohomology, right here, HN. Uh, then uh, complex K theory. These are real and uh, complex. So these are topological K theory. And various bordism spectra. Uh, so uh, in this talk, they will also become important. Complex bordism, real bordism, maybe oriented bordism. Uh, these are all cobordisms, sorry, cobordism. Because I'm talking about cohomology theories. Okay, um, and uh, yeah, so I mean, then there are of course the TMF and these kind of things as well, but we will not say much about TMF in this talk, so maybe I shouldn't really mention them. Uh, uh, so now, of course, some of these things are extremely useful for uh, calculations. For example, complex cobordism, or actually its homological version, complex bordism, is useful for computing these homotopy groups of spheres. And for example, one of the examples of this is, of course, the adams novikov spectral sequence. Novikov spectral sequence. based on mu star. Uh, I don't want to write it out. Uh, it computes these homotopy groups, at least up to extensions and up to differentials. OK, so now uh, this is uh, what we want. But like now we want to actually um, switch to the world of spectra, where all these things actually live. So just to quickly motivate it, so what Brown tells us that any of such cohomology theories are actually representable. So, so this E n E star is representable. Uh, and, and how is it representable? So, so if you take E n of X, and I mean, like, of course, I'm gonna be very sloppy here about some technical details, maybe pointed, unpointed, whatever, all these things, but I'm, I'm working right now in pointed spaces. So, so there exists some spaces en such that this cohomology theory is 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 maps homotopy class of maps from the x into en so like often this en can be like if this is singular cohomology theory then ens are Albert maclean spectra if for example this is k theory then these are some kind of things like z cross bu and u uh, uh, anyhow so we have suspension isomorphisms for this cohomology theory and what these suspension isomorphisms kind of correspond to, which is a bit of cheating because here this applies for some CW complexes and these are typically not. So you need to be a bit careful here, but this corresponds to a map from EN to loops uh, of EN plus one, some kind of unit argument. And, uh, and this is an equivalence. Okay, so and all in all, what you get is the map from suspension of EN into EN plus one for all. And, uh, and maybe, if, I mean, this actually works for every integer, but well, let's take here n greater or equal than zero. Okay, good. And so here is the definition you come, and this is probably the, the, the only definition I will really make in this talk. So uh, a spectrum is a sequence 
no spaces. Uh, yen in greater or equal than zero together with maps uh, suspension of yen into yen plus one. Okay, and so immediate example is of course the sphere spectrum is the sphere spectrum because we have the sphere, which is the sequence of spheres. Uh, and the suspension maps are of course the homeomorphisms from the end suspension of the from the suspension of n sphere to the n plus first sphere. Here, these are homeomorphisms. In general, these do not have to be homeomorphisms. But why are these maps good? These maps are good because if you give me now a spectrum E, let's denote this kind of thing like E. So if E is a spectrum, then of course you can define the, the Kate homotopy group of the spectrum E to be the collimit of pi k plus n yen, where n goes to infinity. And you can use these maps here, these maps here to define here the structure maps. And I don't want to go into details. And this also generalizes, of course, then generalizes, of course, the stable homotopy groups of spheres. Generalizes pi k s we defined, we defined above. <laughs> Okay, so now uh, I want to consider the category of such spectra. So SP is the category of spectra. And uh, now, depending on who you are, either you want to consider this as a model category or maybe just one category. You don't want to do any homotopy theory. I don't know. But like in this talk, what I want is that SP is a stable infinity category. It's a stable infinity category of spectra. I, I mean, I will not go into technical details of, of any of this, but but just that we are on the safe side and working rigorously here. This is the stable infinity category of spectra. So the free stable infinity category of one uh, generator uh, and co-complete. Uh, so this is stable infinity category of spectra. And actually what I really want is to consider this as a symmetric monoidal category. So this is a symmetric monoidal monoidal stable infinity category of spectrum. That's what I want to work with in this talk. And if you don't know what this really is, I mean, objects are definitely these. I already defined for you objects. So objects are here spectra. Uh, and now, uh, again, depending on who you are, you imagine your favorite model of spectra or, or you, you know what this is, what I just said. Uh, this is the usual smash product. Maybe in some literature it's denoted like this, but in the the recent uh, literature, often this is just denoted by tensor. And then this is the unit. The sphere spectrum is the unit. Okay, so now uh, once again, like it's good to think of analogy that this is analogous to abelian groups, uh, tensor products, and integers. Like formally speaking, they are behaving like that. If you have never seen anything uh, like uh, this. But now, for example, uh, in this category of spectra, you can say already a lot. So in, in, in spectra, you can say a lot. You can say a lot. A lot. Using uh, this cohomology theory I was talking about, using this mu star, for example. Uh, and so this is why studying some of these cohomology theories are very useful, except the fact that you can actually compute this using Adams Novikov spectral sequence. You can also use these mu star kind of things to detect nil potency. For example, one of these nil potency theorems, uh, theorems uh, by Devinas Hopkins Smith. Uh, tell us, uh, sorry, there are some, some questions here in the chat. Uh, 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 there is a question if we should require the maps to be uh, equivalences. I mean, yeah, I mean, sure, if you do, if you do uh, these in terms of uh, like infinity categories, then, then mostly you just want to directly consider omega spectra. That is right. But, uh, you know, in some literature, you just consider things with these maps. And I mean, then these kind of things are sort of 
vibrant things in model category world, but in the infinity world, maybe they are not. Um, sorry, I, there's some technical issue here now. I have here some, okay, now I solved it. Yeah, uh, but you know, I don't wanna go into these kind of details because this is just very quick introduction here, what's going on and then I'll switch to something where this is gonna be relevant. So, but you are right, of course, yes. Uh, Right, so now Neil Porton's theorem is something like if X is a finite CW complex, what you can consider is you can consider self map of this thing from large enough suspension of it in itself in the inside in the, in the category of spectra or actually in the homotopy category of spectra, uh, which is just category of spectra together with uh, same objects, but with, uh, with homotopy classes of maps. And now uh, F is Neil Porton, F is the potent uh, is implied. So maybe I should say like this, if mu star F is zero, so if it induces zero on complex cobordism, then this implies that F is nil potent. Uh, so if you self-compose F with large enough suspensions, then, then at some point after finite many steps, you will get zero. So that's why studying these kind of cohomology theories is sort of very, very useful. Okay, so now uh, in the case of abelian groups with tensor products, we can also consider things like these, right? Uh, and if you look at things like these, uh, which satisfy associativity and unitality, these are rings. And what I really want to consider is, is, is rings in, inside, inside here, inside the category of uh, spectra. And so here is another definition. Uh, 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 ring spectrum in this talk, which is the same word for for me in this talk, E1 ring or A infinity ring, whichever terminology you prefer, uh, is a monoid. Let me here check out some more some more comments in the chat. Right, that's right. So if the, the adjoint maps are equivalent, is that those are called omega spectra, right? Good. Uh, ring spectrum is a monomorphism. Uh, sorry, Jesus. Sorry. Uh, a ring spectrum uh, is a is a is a monoid. In uh, it's writing too many monomorphisms yesterday. Sorry. Uh, so a ring spectrum or E1 ring or A infinity ring is a monoid in this uh, in this category. So so what that really is is that this is a spectrum E uh, together with this multiplication and the unit map and this satisfy all the uh, unitality and associativity coherences, you know, coherence data. I mean, of course. When I write monoid in here, of course, I mean in terms of like say infinity categories or model categories, you can define a model structure on this thing and then consider this type of ring spectra, whichever model you prefer. But uh, the things I really care about here is of course uh, several structure that this thing comes with. So the first of all, if E is a ring spectrum, I mean, another model is, for example, the symmetric ring spectra or orthogonal ring spectra, if you want, but I don't want to go into that. Okay, so if E is a ring spectrum or E1 ring, then, and then what you can consider, you can look at uh, some of these homotopy groups, which I defined for you above, which I will denote by pi star E, and this is a graded ring. This is a graded ring. Okay, so that's one thing. Uh, the other thing is that uh, uh, if E is a ring spectrum, then the associated cohomology theory, E upper star X, which is of course defined like I was doing this in the Brown's representability theorem. It's just the map from X to the nth level of the spectrum. I mean, here I would of course switch to some omega spectrum representative of this thing. So if E is a ring spectrum, then this cohomology theory has a has a cup product. So it has a cup product. Cup product or is multiplicative. And that's a good thing about this uh, having a ring spectrum around, but of course they have a bit more than just these uh, these uh, structures here. And, and I don't want to go into 
into that and soon this will become also relevant. And now all these cohomology theories we discussed before, these are all multiplicative as you know, maybe like complex K theory, complex cobordism, also something called stable cohomotopy is also multiplicative. These are all multiplicative. And it turns out the representing spectra are also just ring spectra. So, so the, the representing spectra spectra hz ku mu and the sphere spectrum correspondingly these are all these are all uh uh e1 rings so e1 rings or or, or ring spectra and in fact they are all infinity rings but in this talk i don't really care about the infinity structures at some point, I will have here rings which are not infinity, and then, then I don't want to uh, talk about the infinity ring spectra at all. So all I care about is associativity. Okay, but now if you have such a ring spectrum E, how do you want to study it? I mean, one of the best ways to uh, study E, one of the best ways to study it is is uh, to uh, to look at the category of modules. So in any symmetric monoidal category, if you have a monoid, you can also consider modules, E modules. And, uh, and this is, I mean, officially speaking, this is of course an infinity category of modules I care about here, infinity category, stable infinity category uh, of E modules. But again, you can define it in whatever way you want. And so often in order to understand this, you switch to homotopy category as well. So this is just uh, the, the same same objects as yes in mod but uh, with morphisms being homotopy classes of maps homotopy classes as morphisms but technically speaking maybe this is again a bit you need to be a bit more careful here but uh, but yeah so that's 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 what i want to study uh, so, and now if you consider example e is equal to S, then of course S modules, because S was the unit of the symmetric monoidal structure. This is just the category of spectra itself. And this is again, very complicated. I mean, it's very complicated. I mean, studying this is basically studying stable homotopy groups of spheres and, and even worse because this is even bigger than just maps from sphere to itself. But on the other hand, if you take E equals to the rational sphere. So this is the rational sphere spectrum. Then things are very easy. In that case, what we get is actually something uh, very simple. So, so we can look at the category of modules over this thing. I mean, this is again a ring spectrum. I maybe should say this as well. So this is equivalent to the rational spectra. So rational spectrum. And now what you can uh, what you can see is uh, that if you take the homotopy category of these, and I will comment in a second what's the reason for that. Uh, maybe check here in the chat. So far, so good. Please uh, interrupt me if uh, I, I have a trouble to see chat somehow on my screen sometimes. So I have to extra check it. I will do it occasionally. But also, if you have just questions, feel free to just interrupt me, okay? Because it's enough time and. I was told to take it easy and uh, I will uh, answer also questions. Okay, so here is this homotopy category and this is, turns out to be very easy to understand and this is just graded, equivalent to graded Q vector spaces. So rational spectra is nothing but graded Q vector spaces in the homotopy world. So the homotopy category is just this and the equivalence is of course realized by taking X and sending it to the homotopy groups. That's a graded Q vector space because if you start with a rational spectrum, I don't even have to rationalize here because this will be automatically rational. And this is, of course, that the, this equivalence is, of course, consequence. Uh, here is an observation. What is the relation between S? Uh, I mean, this is, I mean, soon I will go to MU mod. I mean, relation is, of course, there is an adjunction. And some of the things are seen in this category of MU mod. For example, this Neil Potence theorem I told you. So it does see, for example, some nil potents in, in S modules. So there is the base change. I mean, that's the best you can hope. 
a priori. But studying a new modules because of that nil potence result, what I told you is, of course, already pretty useful. But I will soon switch to the category of a mu modules. So, so you're gonna you're gonna see that. Okay. So, uh, uh, okay, great, uh, cool. So, if you have this uh, this this equivalence, I mean, this is a consequence, of course, of something we already mentioned. Consequence of the fact that if you take homotopy groups of this thing, that's exactly the rational homotopy groups of stable homotopy groups of spheres, and that's I told you, it's just Q when star is zero and it's uh, zero otherwise. Okay, and because of this, uh, of course, this graded ring here turns out to be very simple. This graded ring is just Q concentrated in degree zero. And basically this is in a stupid way, but it's a field. I mean, it's a so-called graded field. Every non-trivial element of this thing has an inverse, like homogeneous inverse. And because this is graded field, uh, in particular, this means that there is no interesting homological algebra with this thing going on. This is why this equivalence happens. And you're going to now see in the second that, that this is really uh, crucial. Okay, so this is an example of algebraic model here. So what you see here, this is actually an example, easy example of algebraic model. Sorry, there's some comment here. Okay, uh, some people trying to encourage me. So. Uh, uh, to, to give a good talk, so let's see if that works. So, so this is an example of an algebraic model, because like I don't want to officially define for you what's an algebraic model, you know, but uh, but what I want to what I want to indicate here is that this is something defined from topology, and this is something defined completely in algebra, and that's what I mean by algebraic model, some type of equivalence of one category that comes from topology and the other category that is completely algebraic. And so this is a huge difference now if you take the category of homotopy category of S modules. This does not, so the homotopy category of spectra, this is a well-known fact that this does not have any algebraic model, does not have, have any algebraic model. Like for some experts here, there is no pre-triangulated DG category, for example, whose homotopy category is this. That's, that's an official fact, but no, unofficially, just there is no algebraic thing you can define that will be equivalent to that. And I think many people have noticed this in in many different contexts before as well. And there were several types of results, but I think the most general result that works in every prime in every situation and it completely resolves this issue is is results with some rigidity type results by Stefan Schwede. And so we should uh, we should mention this. Okay, so because this S the sphere spectrum was so complicated because basically the homotopy groups of spheres are so complicated because this result that this does not have an algebraic model eventually boils down to the fact that the homotopy groups of spheres are so hard. There is no algebraic model for this. So the hope to describe this is basically, basically, um, it's basically hopeless. Whereas here in this case, uh, because the homotopy groups were so simple, you were able to provide an algebraic model. So that's sort of the classical idea. So now there was a, there was a question about, so what about other E modules? So maybe we study other E modules and we can say something about this. I mean, that's the motivation to study these. And an example was this MU modules. And I told you that MU sees nil potence, for example, in this category. So therefore understanding this is also not a bad idea. And that's the only as explicit as ever I will go about this issue in this talk, why this studying this is useful for a smart, you know? It's useful to study a new mod because MU sees new potency in the stable homotopy category, and that's good enough motivation for me in this talk. Uh, so, and in general, studying these things as objects themselves is also, of course, very useful. Like in the algebra, just studying modules over some rings is uh, interesting. And then, of course, later, if you want to do some algebraic geometry with these things, then it's even necessary to study it. And then E has to be, of course, commutative. Okay, so what about this MU mod? So I want to study MU mod, but I mean, that's again difficult because if you take homotopy groups of MU, that's a good, nice ring, but it's still pretty infinite. So it's the polynomial algebra on infinitely many generators where these XIs live in degrees to Y. Yeah, these are of course, classical results now I will be mentioning here. I mean, this is a computation to do Milner, Novikov and some, some others. Okay, but now uh, again, this makes very hard to understand this thing because I do not think that anybody has yet 
answer the question if the homotopic category of immune modules is algebraic or not. It's still open. I mean, most likely it is not, but there is no invariant, for example, that can detect it, known invariant. Anyways, uh, so therefore this is too tricky to study. So we should simplify this a bit. So how can we simplify this? I mean, using theory of formal group laws, formal group laws, uh, uh, we can do some things like, for example, Quillen uh, did uh, some deeper observations here uh, based on some algebraic results by Cartier and then some, some, some others. And uh, what you can do is you can split, you can take P now, a prime, and uh, you can localize a mu at P and that is equivalent to some wedge of uh, some suspensions. And I don't want to go right down here, exact suspensions because I will get them wrong of some things called BPs. And again, this BP is a, some ring spectrum or in one ring, which is actually not infinity anymore. We know that. So this is the Brown-Peterson cohomology, Brown-Peterson spectrum. And, and so that makes the life a bit simpler because if you take this BP, um, I mean, first of all, what Quillen noticed is that this thing carries a, the universal formal group law. And then he sort of p-typicalized that using some results by Cartier. And then that gives you some idempotent on this mu p, and then you can split that off. And that's exactly this splitting what I just wrote down. But what I really care about in this talk is that the homotopy groups of this BP, uh, let's see if any questions, no. Uh, is isomorphic to uh, p localized integer v1, v2, v3, and so on, where this vi has a degree to pi minus one, to the p to the i minus one. Okay, so uh, and and once again, I mean this ring now became a bit smaller than this because this had generators in every even degree, whereas this has generators in these kind of p typical even degrees. But again, the same problem shows up here. I mean, at the end of the day, what I really care about is homological algebra over these rings. And homological algebra over infinite polynomial rings is again difficult because you can have X groups in every dimension. So, so I, what I really want is to, to uh, further simplify. So BP mod again, too complicated. Too complicated to study. So further simplify these. And so now we still do the standard procedures. There are many ways of doing this, but of course, because this is a talk, so I need to be a bit, a bit quick. So what you can consider is, for example, you can consider, you can truncate, truncate BP. And there are some procedures to do this. So for example, the thing I want to consider today a lot is this BP ends where, where um, here, I should mention that this is again a, a ring spectrum and here maybe some names because the first people who really put some E1 ring structure on this is Baker and Lazarev, I think, and maybe some others. I mean, with the names in the history, I'm always forgetting some names, which is bad. Uh, so what do we care about this thing? This is a truncated version of this BP, which is basically, I mean, one way of defining this thing, maybe you can write it like that. So BP and then killed. Uh, all the generators after V n plus one. You can write it like that, or I can show you what the homotopy ring is. It's just isomorphic to ZP, uh, V1, V2, and V3, and so on. Okay, so that's uh, BPN. What you can also consider is uh, you can consider ENs, uh, which are also ring spectra uh, or E1 rings, uh, which is obtained by localizing the last, uh, inverting the last uh, generator of this. Oh, sorry, here, of course, Vn. Somebody maybe already pointed this out in, in the chat, no. So it stops at Vn, of course, this BPN, I truncated. Yeah, sorry for that. And so now this, of course, has homotopy ring being isomorphic to similar thing, but the last generator inverted. And again, there are procedures of doing it. I mean, inverting a generator is not a difficult procedure if you have an, any type of high uh, coherent structure like E1 ring, for example, this stays in E1 ring. And so this is what is called the Johnson-Wilson theory. So Johnson-Wilson theory. 
Uh, okay, so and and again, like I fixed the prime at the beginning, and all these things are of course that fixed prime. I mean, actually, the notation should also include the prime and comma p everywhere, but traditionally the prime is suppressed because we always assume that we are working on this implicit prime. Okay, so and now uh, these are E1 rings. And then yet, yet another E1 ring I want to consider is that if you take the EN and you kill the regular sequence P, V1, V2, and so on, EN minus one. And that's what I want to denote by KN, and that's the Antmorava K theory. Okay, so and again, this is E1 ring, and 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 so because BP is not an E infinity, most likely none of these are also E infinity here. What I mentioned maybe except when N is equal to one, when things go back to K theory. But what about this Morava K theory? One thing I can say, and this will be a very important example in this talk is that the homotopy ring of KN is the Laurent polynomial algebra over FPN, FP, where VN has of course degree two PN minus one. Okay, so, uh, and it turns out that we can say a lot, we can say a lot on uh, these things. Yen mod and k yen mod. So as you say, as you notice, I couldn't say anything about mu modules, I couldn't say anything about BP modules, but then I sort of made some little smaller things out of them and there I can say a lot, that's what, that's what I want to uh, say. And I mean, some of these results, of course, uh, were known also before, at least morally, but not the most general result, which I will mention today. So maybe provide algebraic models for this. And when I say a lot, of course, again, some experts here, uh, already someone wants to complain. Uh, 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 oh, that's a good question. So. Uh, it's not equivalent. I mean, the modules themselves are not equivalent, uh, en mod and e small n mod, because again, small e sub n Morava e modules, that's not going to have the kind of algebraic model what I'm discussing. But once you switch to local spectra, so like en local spectra, then uh, then they are the same because they have the same Bausfeld class, e n and e sub n. But same Bausfeld class doesn't necessarily imply that the module categories are equivalent. Yeah. Uh, so usually this is typically easier to study because the homotopy ring is not involving any power series or anything like that. I hope that kind of at least up to some extent answers your question. Okay, so uh, uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, all right, so uh, now um, I want to study these, maybe provide algebraic models, but prime has to be large. I mean, for P large, and I will tell you exactly what that is later. Okay, so now uh, uh, one thing I want to now uh, consider is like, how do I provide these algebraic models for such things? And I mean, I will tell you that, but for that, maybe I should define what a graded module is, differential graded module is. So A star is a graded ring. A differential graded module. M over A star, maybe I'll denote it also by like M star, uh, is, uh, is a pair. Maybe this is a very stupid way of writing it up. I should be writing M star comma D maybe is a, is a, is a graded module, just usual graded module M star over a star together with a differential going from mn to mn minus one uh, such that uh, this is a star linear. I mean, here, this is just a graded ring, not a differential graded ring. If it would be differential graded ring, I have to say more, but, but it also squares to zero. So usual chain complex, but it's also a graded module over this A, and then uh, sort of uh, um, then and then the, it's it's just linear linear over that A. 
And what I want to consider is the derived category of such. So I want to consider derived category of this graded ring, TA star, which is the derived category of, I mean, there are some ambiguities here, what you could consider as derived category of that. And another type of derived category of this will also soon show up. So derived category of differential graded uh, A star modules. That's what I want to consider. Now, what is this derived category? Maybe in around five years ago, I would define this as slightly differently, but now what I really want to consider is this differential graded modules as an infinity category. So uh, differential graded A star modules. And then I want to invert, I mean, objects are these, but then I want to invert in infinity category sense the quasi isos. Or I want to invert in the infinity category sense the homology isos. Inverting homology isos. That's what I want to do. So this is actually the infinity category. So derived infinity category, and not just the homotopy category, because soon I will be taking their homotopy categories. Okay, so now here is an immediate example of that we can understand really well um, what is Kn module. And this is a folklore. Folklore. It's a bit of a folklore result here, uh, which says that if you take the homotopy category of Kn modules at any prime, and recall the Kn was this Morava K theory with having these kind of homotopy groups. I mean, there are many ways of defining this also using formal group laws, for example. Uh, it turns out that this is equivalent uh, to the homotopy category of the derived category, which is an infinity category, something algebraic, of its homotopy ring, graded homotopy ring. So in other words, this is equivalent to something very simple, but it turns out that this whole thing is also equivalent to graded vector spaces over the homotopy ring Fp Vn plus minus one. That's what it is. Over this homotopy ring. And uh, and I mean, why did I say graded vector spaces? Because this is actually graded field. I mean, this is actually graded field. So, so modules over this thing can be called as, as, as vector spaces, can be thought as vector spaces. Graded field and this Vn is of course in degree this Vn is in degree two P to the N minus one. Okay, so, uh, and I mean, as you see, there is an algebraic model here and people have known about this, but how would you ever prove such a result? I mean, what is the way of proving such things? I mean, there is something called atom spectral sequence. Or universal coefficient spectral sequence, whatever way you prefer to call it which says that there is a spectral sequence for any E a ring spectrum. There is a spectral sequence which starts with X comma TS. Uh, I mean, of course I will get the grading here wrong. So I will not even try to write the grading. Uh, so for any E modules X and Y, so X and Y are E modules. Uh, there is a spectral sequence computing homotopy classes of maps from X to E, uh, graded homotopy classes of maps in the category of E modules. Okay, and this spectral sequence completely degenerates in this case, because this is a graded field, as I told you. So the homotopy ring of the Morava K theory is a graded field. Therefore, the, all the higher X groups, X i pi star Kn is always zero for I positive. Okay, so and and this as a consequence implies, of course, that 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 uh, homotopy classes of maps from x to y in k and mod using the homotopy groups is of course isomorphic to the home of homotopy homes in the in the graded modules. Pi star k n. And this is the way to actually obtain this, uh, this equivalence. So as you see, I didn't say here anything, anything new. Okay, uh, so that's a, that's a very nice example. So we have an algebraic model in this case. So now more serious example, more serious example 
is uh, uh, the KU, complex K theory, complex K theory. Why is this more serious example here? The homotopy ring is not any more a graded field. So you can take homotopy ring of KU and that's the bot periodicity. It has some generator in degree two. U is degree two, it's a round generator. And in this case, it turns out though that it's still true that the homotopy category of KU modules, ah, some observation in chat. Uh, no, the homes do not have e-module structure. I mean, this is not a commutative ring a priori. I don't want to consider, I mean, yeah, sure, because, okay, like homotopy ring itself is commutative. I could consider e-module structure, but no, I, I want to consider E star linear maps on this home. So I do not care about uh, whatever linear structure this has. I want to think of this as just graded abelian groups or just abelian groups in this case, yeah. No extra linear structure on these. Okay. That's not uh, question. Yeah. Sorry. There's a question here in the. Can you yes. see that? Yeah, I mean, I answered this question. I think it was about the, the computing e module structure. Uh, I think that structure. Oh, is, yeah. So he's asking if the spectral sequence only computes homotopy classes of maps x to y. Uh, yeah, so so what I what I answered is that this spectral sequence just computes this as a as a as a as an Correct. abelian group as an abelian group. I I did not say that it computes anything as a, as any kind of module structure extra or something. Just as abelian groups, mm -hmm. I don't want to consider any extra structure on these things. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Okay, cool. Great, and now this, this next example tells, tells us that the homotopy category of KU modules is equivalent also to homotopy category of the derived category of its homotopy ring. This is still true. And, and why is this true? The reason now is not as easy as before, like here the spectral sequence was completely degenerating. Now, in this case, the spectral sequence uh, turns out to be the universal coefficient theorem. So if you have X and Y KU modules, you can consider the universal coefficient theorem. Uh, it just becomes an exact sequence in this case. All right, here this, and then here we have home phi star x, phi star y, and zero. So, and we have this kind of universal coefficient theorem. So that means that these things are again, pretty pretty easy to understand uh, as far as you understand homes and X. Plus we know that this homotopy ring has enough zeros. So the, 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 the generator is two. So there are enough zeros here. And let me make this a bit more precise what this is. So here is a definition, the two things I want to define. First of all, you notice that now it really matters. Uh, yeah, so one observation, of course, is that if you take higher X groups, so higher X groups over pi star KU, those are zero once I becomes bigger than one. So again, some vanishing of some X groups is really relevant here because then you only have X to one and home. And now here is a definition. So, so a star a graded ring, the two things we care about. Uh, first is um, a global dimension of A, so dimension of A star, which is the global homological dimension of this A star. What is that? This is the maximum of the numbers M such that the uh, X does not vanish over this thing. Like for some M star and N star graded modules, this is not zero for some. So it's the maximum of those uh, M's such that there is some non-vanishing X group. 
That's the one thing I want to know. And the other thing is that I say that A star is Q sparse for some number Q. If uh, A n is zero, unless n is congruent to zero modulo Q. So if everything is zero in this n, A, A all those numbers are zero, uh, which all those ANs are zero for numbers which are not divisible by Q, then I call it Q sparse. And the, in this example here, this ZU ring, this, this ring here has, uh, for example, dimension one, has dimension one and it's too sparse. It's too sparse because, uh, because this is in degree two. And so what is really important here to conclude this result, very important thing here is that one is less than two. So the fact that one is less than two is a crucial thing to prove this, uh, this equivalence here. So one is being this dimension one and two being this two sparseness. And then this is less than this allows you first of all to uh, not just use this universal coefficient theorem but also split these modules. And once you split these modules, everything can be described in terms of matrices. Therefore, the result, the fact that this Q is bigger than dimension is really, really crucial. And now here we arrive to the general theorem, which is, uh, which is uh, joined with uh, Piotr Strangowski. Uh, which is also this Franke's conjecture, Franke's conjecture for modules. And I will tell the story about this Franke's work in general at the very end, hopefully I will have time. So, so let R be uh, a, a one ring or a ring spectrum Uh, and uh, suppose the homotopy ring is Q sparse, like the Laurent ring was too sparse, Q sparse for some integer Q greater or equal than one. And suppose that uh, D, which is the dimension the homological dimension of this graded ring is less than Q, strictly less than Q. Uh, then homotopy Q minus D category, and I will say exactly what this is. Homotopy Q minus D category of R modules is equivalent to the homotopy Q minus D category of the derived category of this homotopy ring. And as you see, I will tell you now in a second what this homotopy Q minus D category is, but this is something algebraic here. This is, this can be defined completely in terms of algebra. And again, this is here something topological. Okay, so uh, what about these homotopy N categories? Just that, I mean, this is the theorem itself. It just tells you that these homotopy Q minus D categories have algebraic models. So maybe I should tell you what is the, what are these H and C? So if C is any infinity category, uh, I can define its homotopy n category, and I mean there are different conventions maybe in the in the in the literature about this. But what I want is that this has the same objects. And the mapping space is in here. Is there any question? No, mapping space is in here. Are n minus one truncations, Postnikov truncations, or n minus one truncations of the usual mapping spaces in C. So that's roughly speaking what this homotopy n category is. And I mean, why n minus one here? Because I want to have that homotopy one category is really the usual homotopy category. So these things generalize the usual uh, homotopy category. I mean, I don't know, maybe in some literature, hn here will stand here for the n truncation. But, but I'm not really worried about these kind of terminologies. Okay, so in particular, this provides an algebraic model for the homotopy category as well, because Q minus D is in particular at least one 
So in particular, you can say that homotopy category of R modules here is always equivalent to the homotopy category of this derived category. But it says even more, it says way more than just this, at least in most of the cases. Now this theorem is optimal. Uh, this inequality here cannot be made any better. So, and here is an example of that. Example, again, we go back to KN modules. So now, just before I say anything about the proof of this result, I want to uh, indicate to you uh, that there are many examples where you can apply this immediately. So um, you can consider, again, R is equal to KN. Now here, the homotopy ring was this thing, which was a graded field. And here, the dimension is 0. So Q, uh, so D is actually zero. And this is less than Q is equal to two times P N minus one. And this is exactly the sparseness, sparseness in this case. So because the generator, oh, something weird happened again here as often. Yeah, yeah, okay, good, back again. All right, uh, so the, this is the sparseness. So. So, so the fact that, um, that, that Vn is concentrating in these degrees tells you that this is quite, uh, quite sparse. Uh, and now this tells you that homotopy 2Pn minus one category of Kn modules, that's so our theorem says that homotopy 2Pn minus one category is equivalent to homotopy 2Pn minus one category of this algebraic thing. which is the same as the homotopy 2 Pn minus 1 category of the this derived category of this uh, boron algebra here. Okay, uh, but it turns out that the homotopy 2 Pn minus 1 plus 1 categories are not equivalent anymore. That's why this theorem is optimal. So it gives you the best possible equivalence you can hope for in general. Unfortunately, this is also the only case where we can so far show that this is optimal. But again, again like, you know, this is, this is uh, still, still good that at least there is one example. So if you just go one up in this theorem, like when I have this Q minus D here, if you try to go a bit up, you will fail in general. And so here is a reason why, and it's a very classical reason, uh, so the thing is that these homotopy n categories see uh, n minus one truncations of mapping spectra in these corresponding categories. And one of the examples of mapping spectrum in this Kn is, for example, exactly the 2p to the n minus first truncation, this tau, of the connective Morava K theory, this kind of thing. And this is not an eilenberg maclean spectrum, not a eilenberg maclean spectrum. Maclean spectrum. Uh, or generalized eilenberg maclean spectrum, to be honest. A uh, uh, reason being that it's first K invariant. The first non-vanishing K invariant is equal to Qn, which is the Milner's primitive in the standard algebra. If you check it, I mean, that's one of the features of Morava K theory that is its K invariants are these kind of things. So this is the Milner primitive and that's non-zero. Whereas of course the homotopy types of mapping spaces of this derived category of this algebraic thing are always products of eilenberg maclean spaces. So some kind of classical obstruction theory sort of tells you that, 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 that these are not equivalent. So in that sense, this theorem is optimal you cannot go any better butter up in these equivalents. Okay, so now here are more examples where we already, we even didn't know equivalence of homotopy categories. So this applies, for example, this theorem above applies to BPN uh, when, uh, uh, when uh, uh, so, so just to recall the homotopy ring of BPN was uh, isomorphic to Zp, V1, V2, and so on, Vn. 
So the dimension of this thing, dimension of this homotopy ring is equal to uh, homological dimension is equal to m plus one. Now these generators are all in degrees two p to the i minus one. So in particular, this thing here is always divisible. The degrees are always divisible by two p minus one. So it's sparse. The Q is in this case, this number here. Uh, so there is nothing except in degrees divisible by this number. So as far as you can guarantee that the prime is such that this inequality holds, then you can conclude that the homotopy two p minus um, one category minus n plus one of BPN modules uh, is equivalent to uh, homotopy uh, to a P minus one category of the corresponding algebraic uh, corresponding algebraic derived category of this pi star BPN. Okay, so now here it's not as good in the sense that like if I go one up or two up, I cannot immediately say that the next ones are not equivalent because uh, there are some more serious obstructions are needed and we still don't know what these kind of obstructions could be to distinguish uh, these things. Uh, further examples would include like EN where N plus one is less than, sorry, where N is less than 2p minus one. This is also where our theorem applies. In this case, this is D and this is Q. Another example, which is a bit curious is also KO, little KO localized at an odd prime P, P odd. Here, and in this case, uh, the dimension is equal to two and the sparseness is equal to four. Uh, and, and then you can conclude actually that the homotopy two categories are equivalent. It's equivalent to homotopy two category of, uh, of the homotopy ring, which is a Laurent, which is a polynomial ring in one, one variable, the homotopy category of the, sorry, of the derived category of this. <laughs> Okay, uh, where V has degree two, degree four, sorry. Uh, and why is this important, the homotopy two categories? I think in like around 10 years ago or something, I wrote a paper where I was showing that homotopy category of KO modules, just the homotopy category was equivalent to the homotopy category of the derived category of the CPV. I could show this, but I couldn't show that this equivalence was respecting triangulated structures. Now, because we know that there is equivalence of homotopy two categories, uh, it, this implies that there is actually also equivalence here of triangulated structures. So, so like exact sequences on this side correspond to exact sequences on this side. So actually what it really is happening is this equivalence. Okay. Great, uh, so that's another application. Uh, so now there are some variations of TMF where you can also apply this, uh, this result. Uh, so now a uh, final observation before I give you the proof of the result. Final observation is that, uh, that the category of R modules as an infinity category in none of these examples is never equivalent to derived category of pi star R. We know about all of these examples I mentioned here as infinity categories, these are never equivalent. So we do know that somewhere higher up as these homotopy categories should dif be different, but we can't quite always see where is this happening that when they are not equivalent, except only in one example, which was this Morava K theory example, which is already quite nice to have because you know that there is very explicit examples where you can see this. But I cannot say anything about other examples. For example, for BKU, we know that H4s are not equivalent, but we don't know anything about H2 and H3. Still, still unclear. Okay, so here the idea of the proof of the result. How do you provide such an algebraic model? And here I have to say that this, uh, there was a work written by Franke in 96 and I mean, that result, that, that paper was claiming these type of results 
they, they always are true. But it turned out in like 2009, there was a gap discovered in this paper, a fatal error that broke down the, broke down the proof. Uh, and since then, some people, including myself, were trying to fix this, unfortunately failed. So uh, now uh, this method, what I'm presenting here, is a completely different method than, than what Franke was trying to, trying to use. Uh, I mean, then later, because there was this uh, gap found, it kind of became a conjecture rather than a, rather than a, rather than a, a result. But 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 now using completely different methods, we 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 managed to sort of get this uh, thing. So now here, the idea of the proof is using, of course, Hopkins uh, obstruction theory. And in this case, the obstruction theory is extremely hands-on because we are working with modules. So we even like reprove this whole obstruction theory uh, and, and, and we don't have to use some heavy machines for that. Uh, and uh, and uh, I should also mention here that maybe these people, Dwyer, Blanc, and Bowes and some others are also to be credited for ideas that are involved in this proof. Uh, so what we really do, we start with these R modules and we consider Ioneta embedding into something called P sigma R mod FP. So now I need to define all these players. So this is Ioneta. So now I go in the world of infinity categories. So what is this P sigma? So this P sigma is product preserving functors, finite product preserving functors, pre sheaves on, uh, on uh, this R mod FP op into spaces. So S was usual notation used in many times in this, in this uh, conference uh, uh, for, for spaces. So now what is this R mod FP? These are uh, finitely generated projectives. So, 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 so some X, some X belongs to this R mod FP if and only if the homotopy of X is finitely generated projective over pi star. Okay, uh, and, uh, and, and so you take all of them, you consider uh, this as a, as a infinity category, you take its op and then you consider these infinity functors from finite product preserving functors from here to there. It's called also like homotopy varieties or something like this in, 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 in Lurie. And so now you consider the Gorse Hopkins tower. And what does this look like? Gorse Hopkins tower for this thing is a tower M infinity top. I will have soon also something called M infinity alg. Therefore I want to call it top. And so here we have the intermediate stages ML top and L minus one top and so on and M zero top. And what are these things? First of all, I want to just say, I'm considering this Ioneta embedding and these things are all subcategories, subcategories of this P sigma. Of this P sigma business. Okay. Uh, yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, right. Uh, now, uh, what is M0? M0 top is nothing but uh, just pi star R modules. So graded modules. These are graded modules. This is very algebraic. Uh, and M infinity is the R modules. Now, what are these intermediate things? Uh, intermediate things can be defined pretty easily. So, so uh, what we have on this category of R mod FP, what we have is the suspension functor. If you have a finitely generated projective R module, you can suspend it, it will stay finitely generated projective. So if you give me any pre sheaf here, uh, then there is a natural map going from 
composing, like pre-composing with this suspension into this wants to commute with the loop. So loop, level-wise loop of this pre-shift. There is a natural comparison map like that. And we call, we say that X is in this ML and call this potential L stage, so L stage. Uh, if X is L truncated. So its values are taken into L truncated spaces and this comparison map and C induces isos on pi i for i less than or equal to uh, L minus one. So that's what ML is. And now it's the usual obstruction theory business that tells you that passing, passing from ML to ML plus one has obstructions has obstructions. And I will tell you exactly what that passing means. It has obstructions in the X groups, X groups over pi star R. Uh, and let's write these X groups L plus two minus I for the I's ranging in the range where this eventually becomes negative. But now if we assume that this L is greater or equal than the dimension of this ring, uh, the homological dimension of this ring, which I denoted by D, and I assume that I is less than this L minus D plus one, then what I can immediately see is that D is less than, actually here, another X group that will matter is L plus three, but that's even higher. I'm not really worried about that. That's another thing you have to worry about. So D is less than L minus E plus two. So if I is in this range, all these X groups will vanish because these L minus E plus two will become bigger than uh, the homological dimension. Therefore, what you can immediately conclude is that homotopy L minus D plus one category of this L plus one stage is always equivalent to homotopy L minus D plus one category of this L stage. Here L plus one and here L. So in particular, what we get when we take when we take, uh, uh, for example, we take L is equal to Q minus one, where Q was the sparseness in our theorem, what we get immediately out of this obstruction theory is that homotopy Q minus D category of our R modules, which was M infinity, is equivalent to homotopy Q minus D category of M Q minus one stage, this top. Now I will write again top on these things because I, I call them top. So I should be writing here all over also tops. Okay, let's top here and the top here. Okay, uh, yeah, so this is what you get. But then what you can also do, you can do the corresponding algebraic thing. So you can, instead of looking at our mod, you can look at the derived category. And that is the same as just modules over the corresponding Oliver McLean thing, H pi star R module. Uh, and the same kind of obstruction theory will work in this case. I mean, there is no difference here. So you can just run the same show because the homotopy ring is the same and conclude that this is homotopy Q minus D category of potential Q minus one stage, but now the algebraic version of that, okay? So that's what you do. And now there is a monodicity argument and this was only using the fact that the dimension was uh, dimension was uh, dimension was less than Q minus one. It never used this sparseness condition in the in the theorem. Now monodicity and sparseness, and this is this bar back Lurie monodicity sparseness shows you that if you take this Q minus one stage. The sparseness is that there were no homotopy groups except in degrees divisible by Q. And what the sparseness shows you is, sorry, there's some weird now. Again, something weird with my system. 
Come on. Sorry. It just does sometimes something weird. Okay, I need to go here back and forth, come back, maybe, and then, then it's gonna be, ah, good. Okay, works again, very, very good. Okay, so now this sparseness shows you that uh, this is equivalent to the algebraic thing. And both of them are actually equivalent to some T algebras for specific monad in the non-negative derived category of this homotopy ring which is not the differential graded modules derived category, but now it considered as a graded ring, the usual non-negative derived category of these graded modules as some monad. And, and you can identify both these things to that after Q minus one truncation. So sparseness goes in that you can actually identify these two stages, the Q minus first stages, because there is nothing between zero and Q in homotopy groups. So the topological side and algebraic side are the same. And the homological dimension condition tells you that the homotopy Q minus D categories are actually equivalent to homo homotopy Q minus D categories of something much simpler. Okay, so now just because I'm over time, a comment is that there is a, there is a generalization of this result, much more general. I mean, this shows the case for modules. Now there is this generalization of this result using general presentable infinity categories together with some homology theories uh, going into some abelian category that is appropriately has enough injectives, has some kind of splitting and this homological dimension is smaller than that splitting and this satisfies certain things. And so, so, so this is the general version of Franke's algebraicity conjecture and we also prove that so so this generalization we also we also prove a general version a much more general version claimed by more general version of above version of above involving abelian categories with enough injectives and 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 certain presentable infinity categories uh, proving that the homotopy Q minus D category of such a C with this type of homology theory is equivalent to homotopy Q minus D category of certain type of derived category of this A, which I don't want to define. I mean, I ran out of time. And the consequence of this is, of course, the algebraic model, also an algebraic model, model for uh, EN star, EN local spectra, EN local spectra. Uh, in, the, in the degrees where 2p minus 2 is uh, less greater than n squared plus n. And I mean, I, I ran out of time just to mention here some history. Uh, uh, I mean, first of all, when p goes to infinity, this result was already known in literature. Uh, uh, this is the result by Bartle, Schlank, and Stapleton about their uh, infinite prime and uh, ultra products uh, for in this range where half of the range where p minus one is bigger than n squared plus n Piotr already had a with slightly different methods uh, using synthetic spectra he has written this beautiful paper on algebraicity of chromatic category he already knew this in this case now Franke of course claimed this result back in the days uh, but again, because of the, this gap in his paper, this was, this was uh, unfortunately not valid until now. But now, now we also know that this, this has an algebraic model in this, in this range. And just the last comment, when P is uh, odd and N is one, this is Bausfield. And when P is equal to two and N is one, then Constanze Reutzheim actually showed that there was no algebraic model. So Reutzheim, tells us that there is no algebraic model in this case. No algebraic model. Okay, so I ran out of time. Very sorry for that. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you very much for a nice talk with a very beautiful explanation of the introduction in the introduction. So are there any questions or comments by somebody? I think there should be a way to raise your hand Ah, yes, I see 
is somebody, but I in the meantime, I, 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 I can't see who is question. raising the hand in the system. Yeah, someone is already. No, please, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, uh, in, in the very beginning of your proof, uh, where you, you mentioned the unit embedding, yeah. I think I, mis I maybe misunderstood uh, what you called uh, R mod FP, because is, is it, uh, it's not clear to me that it's an embedding if you take this the definition that you gave of. I mean, yeah, I mean, you have to argue why it's an embedding. Of course, it's not an obvious. You, yeah, okay, you are right. I should delete this here. I mean, it is Yoneda type of embedding. You know, it's like sending X to, you know, maps out of. Yeah. That's exactly what it is, but you are right, of course. I'm not putting here our mod, I'm putting FP. You have to argue why this is an embedding. That's, but a, if, that's for, right. so if you take, for instance, R to be an Allenberg McLean spectrum, then it, it seems to me like the, the right hand side is, is connective R modules. No, no. I mean, the thing is, no, that's, uh, I mean, no, I mean, the homotopy groups here, the homotopy groups here is not, is not the same as the homotopy groups here. You understand that? So yeah, I, I know, but but if you so the the, the, the right hand side is, is that, the thing is that in the source, in the source, you can suspend in every direction. So for example, if you ask me, for example, what's the height? I mean, you can here when you have this X, you can put in here any type of suspension. You want right, so, so I think I have a different definition of projective over pi star of R then. Okay. Yeah, projective over pi star of R could be anything with a shift here, you know? Okay, like, okay, okay, yeah. great. So, so yeah, exactly. So I can also negative shift those and that generates negative homotopy groups, yeah. Okay, great, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Okay. Hi, uh, Rackley. Oh, hi. Yeah. yeah, I had a question that maybe it's, um, um, I don't know, very obvious or that okay so you you have these two truncated homotopy categories right okay that you show the equivalence yeah so um as infinity categories are are they formal in the sense that they don't have non-trivial k invariants in that range uh i mean i mean yeah i mean i haven't really studied uh k invariants in uh, the sense of like infinity categories for, for, for these things, you know? Uh, uh, I mean, I mean, one, one thing that is a consequence is that, yeah, so if you take K invariance of mapping spaces, if you take K invariance of mapping spaces, like let's, I don't know what's K invariant of infinity category. I think people have written recently some papers about this. I think Jonathan and, uh, and, 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 uh, and Mathan and, and I, I forgot now. People have written, people have definitely written papers on this, uh, but but let's take just plain mapping spaces. In that case, yeah, they will be they will be all uh, they will be all zero those k invariants because you have the, the the mapping spaces on the topological side in these truncations. So these are these truncated mapping spaces. They are equivalent to corresponding truncated mapping spaces on the algebraic side. But those are eigenvalue McLean spaces. So all the k invariants will will vanish for them. Yes. Right. I was wondering because if you have the equivalence at the level of ordinary homotopy categories, and then the higher homotopy groups of these um, infinity categories coincide. So if you had trivial k invariance up to that level, it would be yeah, another I mean, way of getting. This is, this is the usual. This is the usual thing you want to try always. Yeah, I agree with that. But then getting all these coherences together, like the compositions being uh, compatible and all that, that's where all the problems are buried in, you know? Like, sure. like, yeah. like I mean, all these, all these, like, again, like these are two ring spectra, they have the same homotopy groups. So we can start just by looking at isomorphisms of these homotopy groups, right? And start to build back the, 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 the some kind of quasi isomorphism between them or, or whatever you want to try. And once again, like the problem is uh, stuck in the fact that like, for example, one side could have some total brackets, which you yeah. don't see really on, 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 on the homotopy, uh, on, the, on the homotopy groups is considered as additive things or even on the, on the homotopy groups of mapping spaces sometimes, you know? So, so therefore all these building in all these coherences for compositions mm -hmm. is kind of the main problem what you have if you want to do this 
Yeah. Well, the um, um, categorical k invariants of um, the higher categories, um, they do see the total brackets, though, but okay, yeah. I mean, I am pretty sure that using categorical k invariants could say something here. For example, what it could help us to do is to say, see, for example, when these things are not equivalent, you know? <laughs> like you could try to like go up in this uh, tower and, and like I told you that the n plus first, like whenever q minus d plus first categories, for example, should not be equivalent to some example. Yeah, actually it was this tower what inspired my question in some sense because the tower, it looked to me somehow as if it had to do with a kind of passing of the composition. And, it is, it is, it is related to that. It is related to that because I took, I took, uh, I took here also L truncated objects, but there is an extra condition which sort of worries about this map. I see. It's a bit more than just postnical truncations. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, sure. Okay, thank you. There's just a question on the on the chat waiting since uh, oh, yeah. okay. two minutes ago. If you want to have a look, I see. Uh, what's the relation between E mod and A mod and E tensor E mod? Maybe co module. Is there any example? I mean, uh, when you want to do co modules, yeah, so there's a different story. Like, like again, like some of our results also apply in this co module case, but you can consider E mod uh, and you can consider E local spectra. And, and, and these are a priori different, completely different categories. And, and uh, these kind of E star E type co-module type things, those can be used to classify this. Like when I talk about algebraic models in this setting, for example, for E and local spectra, here I'm gonna use co-modules. Whereas, whereas uh, these things are not really used in, 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 in this case. So, so it's not much Really, if you do some algebraic model for that, it's not going to give you a model for this and vice versa. I mean, some similar methods maybe could could use could be used. But here again, we were working with projectives, whereas here you're going to work with injectives. So that's the difference. I don't know if this answers your question, but yeah. Okay, thank you. I think we should uh, have a break now. And uh, so before that, we thank our speaker. Um, and we should have a least 10 minutes break. So let's say 11.15 for, uh, for the next talk, 11.15.